Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's get this evening started, if you would. Take your seats, if there's any seats left. Uh, and Cap Scouts, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, please move over in this area, if you would, please. I want to thank everybody for attending this evening here. Uh, and if you would, if you have your phones, if you would please silence them before we start here. I should have probably announced that earlier. But as we stand here tonight, this beautiful memorial, I think we should reflect a little bit on the tragedy that came upon our country 18 years ago. Let's remember how this nation came together to support one another on September 12th, after September 11th. As a nation, we have to remain strong but more importantly, we will never forget this. And coming up right now is, you ready? Larissa Gay, daughter of Peter Gay, uh, a passenger on American Airlines Flight 11. <laughs> Calling me up fast before I can even re go over my speech. Jeez, Jim. 
But um, good morning, everyone. Once again, I would like to thank you all for taking time out of your busy lives to come together for a few minutes to reflect, remember, and to spread love to one another on this National Day of Remembrance. 18 years. I seriously cannot believe I am even saying that right now. It truly feels like yesterday sometimes still, yet other times I struggle to remember the sound of my dad's voice, and those are times I truly realize the amount of time that has gone by without him. Now let me ask you, every year we stand here and say never forget 9-11 on this day. Nowadays I see everyone posting and sharing pictures and images of that day on their social media pages, but is that truly keeping the memory alive? The memory of all those who were lost and of those significant and of the significance of this day? In my, in my opinion, that's not enough. Truly never forgetting 9-11 comes in forms of love and selflessness. It's that extra hug or kiss or sign of appreciation we do or show to our parents or guardians or loved ones, anyone around us that we see day in and day out. It's the compassion we show to those who may be having a tough day, any day throughout the year, maybe physically or emotionally. It's the genuine, the genuine want to be a giver of love. That's the true spirit that what is now known as Patriot's Day, this day truly stands for. There's a whole generation of new age, of, of the new age generation almost, that are almost adults that weren't even born when this day happened. Education is so important. Many didn't live through that event that changed our whole world as we know it today. They learn about it in school, but hey, so did I about tragedies in our nation's past. We all believe that we are the outsider to tragedy. Oh, that would never happen to me. A popular mindset had by all. But life can truly change in the literal blink of an eye. Just a little quote. If we remembered every day that we could lose someone at any moment, we would love them more fiercely and freely and without fear. Not because there is nothing to lose, but because everything can be lost. This is what I try to strive to, to tell those who were not on this earth during 9-11. Speaking to the young, younger generation about the importance of this day is something so important to me. In fact, this past year, my mom and I did a presentation at the Tuxbury Memorial High School simply explaining our day, um, how our day went that day, and kind of our grieving process and where we are now. Um, Almost one of those same presentations that I sat through once I w when I was in high school and when I was even in middle school or before I could even remember. And it added a little reality of what little old me learned back then and still continue to learn as years go on. This year was a particularly, particularly tough year for me. Life through a few unexpected ups and downs. But I continue to have faith that my dad did and will always guide me through such obstacles in life. See, we experience various forms of loss in our life, whether it be death, loss of relationship, love, or just simple losses, whether it be a Patriots game, never happening, um, sports games, any type of loss. However, it will forever be how we handle that loss that defines us. You can let it defeat you, or you can use it to become a stronger and more defined version of yourself. Being so young when I lost my dad, I never truly understood how this would define me as an adult. Now this day as a whole truly makes me reflect and think about how far I've come and how far I can still go from this point on. When you lose a father, a mother, a son, daughter, or a loved one that is that special and that close to you, that tragically, it truly changes you more than you even realize. It changes how you think and act day in and day out. It is forever a learning process to cope with the new you as a result of that tragedy. Sometimes I forget that. I have bad days, some worse than others. I have good days. And I forget that sometimes it truly is okay to just feel. Today is one of those days that I give myself to just feel. And it'll always be for as long as I'm on this earth. 
I'll bring this speech to a bit of a conclusion with a prayer of sorts of, of remembrance. It's called We Remember Them. At the rising of the sun and at its going down, we remember them. At the blowing of the wind and the chill of the winter, we remember them. At the opening of the buds and in the rebirth of spring, we remember them. At the blueness of the skies and the warmth of the summer, we remember them. At the beginning of the year and when it ends, we remember them. As long as we live, they too will live, for they are now a part of us. We remember them. When we are weary, in need of strength, we remember them. We are, when we are lost or sick in heart, we remember them. When we have joy we crave to, ch to share with others, we remember them. When we have decisions that are difficult to make, we remember them. When we have achievements that are based on theirs, we remember them. As long as we live, they too will live, for they are now a part of us. We remember them. Thank you all for gathering once again to remember all that we have lost to this tragedy and to remember all that we continue to lose due to its effects. Remember, check on, check on your loved ones. Give them a call, an extra hug, a giving hand. This is a day of service. Honor it by doing just that and by spreading the love that we do desperately need in this world. And finally, to my dad, whether you're watching over me, surrounding me with your guidance, or simply in the air that I breathe, I remain hopeful for your love and guidance through this crazy thing we all call life. I truly miss you more and more as the years go on. And of course, we will never, ever forget you. Always may God bless and thank you. Will you all sing God Bless America with me? God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans white with foam god bless america my home sweet home god bless america Thank you, Heather. You know, we, Dick and I were talking, Dick and I have been involved with the 9-11 memorial here since the beginning, and we were talking about the different things and different paperwork that we have accumulated over time. And I put together a little time frame here. <coughs> At 8.46 on September 11th a.m., American Airlines Flight 11 crashed into World Trade Center, the North Tower. At 9.03, United Airlines Flight 175 crashed into the South Tower. At 9.37, American Airlines Flight 77 crashed into the Pentagon. At 9.59 a.m., the South Tower collapsed. At 10.06, United Airlines Flight 93 crashed into a field in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. And at 10.28, the North Tower collapsed. In approximately 102 minutes, 2,973 people from around the world were killed in this act of terrorism. Since September 11th, there have been thousands of responders, first responders, that responded to the pile, which is also the World Trade Center site. First respond, first as a rescue mission to see if they can find any survivors, then as a recovery process. 
But many of those first responders have since died of seriously ill. For that reason, we should never, ever forget what happened that day. Of those 2,973 that perished that day, there were 93 citizens from the state of Massachusetts. Gentlemen. Today we would once again like to remember the Massachusetts residents who died as a result of the events of September 11, 2001. American Airlines Flight 11, North Tower, 55 residents. United Airlines Flight 175, South Tower, 26 residents. The World Trade Center, 11 residents. American Airlines Flight 77, the Pentagon, 1 resident. There were no Massachusetts residents aboard United Airlines Flight 93, Shanksville, Pennsylvania. Massachusetts lost 93 residents. Anna Williams Allison. Barbara Aristegui. Myra Aronson. Garnett Ace Bailey. Christine Babudo. David W. Bernard. Mark Bavis. Graham Andrew Berkeley. Kelly Ann Booms. John Brett Cahill. Christopher Costangin. Nellie Ann Heffernan Casey. Jeffrey W. Coombs. John J. Cochran III. Tara Kramer. Patrick Caravan. Captain Gerald Francis DeConto. David Demiglio. Donald Americo De Tulio. Paige Farley Hackle. Alexander M. Filipov. Paul Friedman. Carlton D. B. Phi. Peter Gay. Linda George. Lynn Catherine Goodchild. Peter Morgan Goodrich. Lisa Fenn Gorenstein. Douglas A. Growell. The Reverend Francis E. Grogan. Mally Rachel Hale. Kristen Lee Hansen. Peter Hansen. Sue Kim Hansen. Eric Samakian Hartono. Peter Paul Hashem. James E. Hayden. Robert Hayes. Ted Hennessy. Todd Russell Hill. Cora Hildago. Holland, Herbert Homer, Nicholas Humber, Robert Adrian Jalbert, John Charles Jenkins, Charles Edward Jones, Robin Kaplan, Ralph Francis Kershaw, Brian Kinney, Judy LaRock, Natalie Janice Lesden, Daniel C. Lewin, Marianne McFarlane, Susan Mackey, Karen A. Martin, Joseph Mathea, Deborah Medwig, Christopher Mello, Craig James Miller, and Carlos Alberto Montoya. Laura Lee Morabato. Christopher M. Morrison, Michael Gregory McGinty, Mildred Rose Nairman, Kathleen Nicosia, John Oganowski, Betty Ann Ong, Jane M. Orth, 
Nitlin Ramesh Prandakar, Sonia Morales Papulo, Patrick Quigley, David E. Raytek, Frederick Charles Ramili, Raymond James Rocha, Gene Roger. Rosenwig, Richard Ross, Jessica Leigh Sachs, Rama Sully, Jesus Sanchez, Jane Louise Simkin, Heather Lee Smith, Diane Snyder, Brian D. Sweeney, Madeline Amy Sweeney, Michael Theodoridis, Amy E. Toyan, James Trendini, Mary Trendini, Antonio Jesus Montoya Valdez, Kenneth Waldi, William M. Weems, Christopher Saba. I will be singing Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. But now am found, was blind, but now I see. T'was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. That grace appear the hour I first believed through many dangers, toils, and snares. Have we already come? T'was grace that led us safe thus far, and grace will lead us home. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. Thank you. Uh, good evening. We'd like to thank everyone for attending, uh, especially with the uh, time change. Uh, it was uh, 
a little bit confusing, but uh, I'm glad everyone is here. So, um, And we'd also like to thank everyone who participated, our honor guards, our band, our scouts, uh, and uh, everyone else who was speaking, and Larissa always does a great job. I'd also like to thank uh, Sheriff Peter Cartusian for the and his staff for uh, putting the tent up. We never know what the weather's going to be like, so uh, it also was helpful to have it um, here uh, for shade. Also, this year we had a lot of assistance from Diane um, Grazio, the library staff, and uh, Christine Cicerino from the Board of Selectmen's office. You can imagine changing the time and all of the different media outlets that had to be notified. But you probably noticed that the wall on the uh, this side of the memorial doesn't have its usual cap on it. Um, due to some vandalism and general weathering, um, the cap that was on there uh, was deteriorated. So we had to put a temporary cap on to uh, protect the integrity of the wall. We didn't want that to uh, get uh, destroyed by frost this winter. And I'd like to thank Mark Ginsburg and Dave Gramstoff and the T Tewksbury Country Club staff for coming in here and taking care of that for us real quickly. A permanent solution is to cap the wall with a granite slab. At the same time, we're going to replace the concrete floor that's uh, inside the memorial with granite and repair the brick pavers that have settled over the years. Tewksbury 9-11 Memorial Committee is a, a nonprofit organization and uh, we rely on the generosity of local businesses and the public in general for funding. We receive no funds from any government agency. All improvement and maintenance costs are done through contributions. So. Um, I know you won't remember this, but you might be able to view it on the website. Jason's going to have this up for it. But uh, if you'd like to help out, you could uh, send a donation to the Tewksbury 9-11 Memorial Incorporated P.O. Box 55, Tewksbury, Massachusetts, 01876. No amount is too small. No amount's too big either. But uh, um, we want to be able to keep the the memorial in, in good shape so that it be here for many years to come because our main mission, as been stated before, is to never forget. Thank you all for coming. Have a great evening.